In this video, we're going to go over the use of a manifold in a cath lab setting. The manifold that we use is a four port manifold, as you see here. It has four different channels that you can control individually. The benefit of a manifold is you can have all your sources connected and you can change the inputs depending on what you need without having to undo or reattach the tubing. This is the standard configuration for a four port manifold. The first port is pressure, the second port fluid, the third port contrast, and the fourth port waste. When I was learning this, they taught of a imaginary army soldier called Private First Class Williams. You can use that to remember the four ports. You can see the first port connects to the pressure line. The second port connects to your fluid, which is usually heparinized saline. The third port connects to your contrast. And the fourth port connects to your waste bag. As you can see on the manifold, each of the ports has an associated three-way stopcock. This is how you decide the path that the fluid will travel when you either withdraw or push on the syringe. When the stopcock is closed to a channel, fluid will not flow through it. When the two sides are open, fluid will flow. You can see here, I turn all the stopcocks so that there's a solid path from the patient to the syringe. If I were to pull back here, blood would enter from the patient into the syringe or push back from the syringe back to the patient. If I turn the fluid port up, now there's a path from fluid to my syringe. So when I pull back, I'll pull fluid from the fluid bag to my syringe. If I push back in this position, it'll push back into the fluid syringe. Now here, I've dyed the fluid blue so that you can see it better. You can see that the fluid three-way stopcock is pointing up, so I pulled fluid into this stopcock. Now if I turn that stopcock down, I can push that fluid into the patient. Now here I have the stopcock turned up to the contrast, so I can pull back contrast. It's been dyed red, just so you can see it better. Now if I want to dilute the contrast, I can turn the fluid port up and withdraw fluid into my syringe as well. So here I have a 50-50 mix of fluid and contrast. Now I can inject that into the patient if I need. Another critical aspect of using a manifold is making sure that you never inject air into the patient. You can see here that I have fluid in my syringe. If I want to inject this into the patient, I would always hold the manifold in a downward trajectory like this so that any air in the syringe rises to the top and the what I inject will be fluid, not air. You can see if the manifold is in an upright position like this, the air sits close to where it's injected and that can go into the patient. And that's the basics of using a manifold. In a different video, we'll go over how to prepare a manifold making sure that there's no air in any of the ports or channels. This is a different version of a manifold. This is a three port manifold. You can see that the center port has a Y connection. This actually serves as your fluid and waste together. This simplifies a little bit because you can pull back and push forward to clear fluid or blood or anything else from your syringe by drawing fluid and then injecting into the waste without needing to manipulate the, the stopcocks at all.